Hi, Matthew here, Corporate Safety Trainer for Raymond of New Jersey. We are here today to provide you with the data gathered from a recent tour of your South Brunswick, New Jersey facility. The data will help you determine if the current safety training program for operators of powered industrial trucks at this facility is meeting your needs. As we go along, I'm sure you will have questions. Jot them down and after this presentation, we will have a question and answer session to address any concerns. First, let me say, I admire the outstanding work that organizations like yours are doing in the material handling industry. As a corporate safety trainer, I have the opportunity to see how various companies function from the inside. And companies, such as Williams-Sonoma, are definitely on the cutting edge. As indicated in our visit, there is a need to enhance your safety training. This will ensure your employees are operating the forklifts safely and effectively. We found the operation and overall performance in this facility is meeting the basic needs. Our safety audit did uncover some concerns with your existing training program. There is OSHA required material that is not currently part of your curriculum. This material will have a positive impact on the overall operation in your warehouse. It will help drive down accidents as well as repair costs on the equipment by reinforcing proper operating and load handling procedures for the forklifts. Let's take a look at some obvious and some not so obvious concerns that you may want to address. Safety in the workplace is a way of thinking, not just by one or two individuals. It involves the entire company. Every employee, whether in the warehouse, on the production line, or in the office, contributes to a safe work environment. Every time an employee chooses a procedure or a means of getting the job done, that employee is making a safety decision. We have programs that train new employees, refresh and improve the skills of experienced operators, or educate pedestrians. Raymond of New Jersey can become a strategic partner in educating employees to make the safe choice every time. Whether it's the safe operation of your material handling equipment or to move safely in and around the work area. You may be wondering, what are the benefits of a safe work environment? Let's take a look at some of the benefits. Some of the benefits are improved productivity. When operators are using the equipment correctly, they can put away, retrieve, and pick product more efficiently. You boost employee morale. Employees feel good about themselves when they get things done right the first time. Reduce accidents. This is a big one. Accidents can have a devastating effect on all involved. Less product damage. When operators learn the correct load handling procedures and follow them, damages are kept to a minimum. Lower maintenance costs. Properly trained operators will help keep maintenance costs down. Attract and retain employees. Employees come to work because they want to come, not just because they have to. Let's take a look at some of the areas of evaluation. Training material and procedures. During the visit, I had the opportunity to view a portion of the training presentation that you are using in the classroom. It seems to be a variation of Raymond's safety on the move. There are some very important OSHA requirements missing from this presentation. For example, the exercise showing the difference between a forklift and an automobile, which is an OSHA regulation. You also need to have a written examination as well, and a copy needs to be kept with the operator certification in their file. Another area we looked at was the daily checklist procedure. This is the most important procedure an operator performs. It should be done at the start of every shift. Without proper inspections, there is no way to bring any maintenance or repair issues to the attention of the warehouse management. This usually will lead to unsafe operating conditions. William Sonoma has an in-depth checklist. In fact, it comes very close to resembling the manufacturer's own checklist. This is the actual OSHA code 1910.178Q7 which states that industrial trucks shall be examined before being placed in service. It also goes on to say that each of these examinations will be made at least daily and if the trucks are used on a round-the-clock basis they shall be examined after each shift. Any defects found will be reported immediately and corrected. Another area of concern we uncovered during our evaluation has to do with the vehicle specification plates. The vehicle spec plate has very important information for the operator. 
the load center, weight limits, lifting capacity, and many other important facts about the forklift. Operators are not required to memorize this information on the spec plate. However, they do need to know where it is located and what data can be found on it. While conducting our observation, we discovered many trucks with specification plates that were covered over with paper and tape, and one truck was missing the plate completely, all of which do not comply with the current OSHA regulations. Here is the actual OSHA code that states that the user shall see that all nameplates and markings are in place and are maintained in a legible condition. We also observed travel procedures in and around the warehouse. Almost all operators were ignoring safety procedures during travel in the warehouse. Operators were passing trucks and aisles and not maintaining the proper distance between each moving forklift. These are the actual OSHA codes in regards to travel procedures in the warehouse. It states that all traffic regulation shall be observed, including authorized plant speeds, and a safe distance shall be maintained, which is approximately three truck lengths from the truck ahead, and the truck shall be kept under control at all times. It takes a forklift traveling with a load approximately one truck length to stop. It also goes on to say that trucks traveling in the same direction at intersections, blind spots, or other dangerous locations shall not be passed. The following two OSHA codes have to do with trucks when they're unattended. We noticed a lot of the operators, when they were leaving their trucks unattended, they were not neutralizing them. There were also trucks being left parked blocking aisles while operators went on a break, and in one location, an order picker was at a 90 degree angle with the rack. An order picker should never be at a 90 degree angle with the rack, and it should not be used to put away or retrieve full pallets from racking. However, on a positive note, most operators use their horn at the appropriate locations in the warehouse. Load handling is another area that has some challenges. Many operators were observed driving unstable loads. There are also many broken pallets in use throughout the warehouse and should be removed from circulation and discarded. I know you have started to address this with the recent purchase of new pallets. One of the issues with the load handling was that the loads were stacked too high for safe travel and the operator does not have a clear view of the path in front of him. In addition to stacking and traveling with loads that were too high, operators are dragging and pushing pallets with their forklifts, sometimes referred to as bulldozing. This not only damages the pallets, it will also lead to many unnecessary and costly repairs to your equipment, from hydraulic leaks and snap side shifters to bent load backrests. Loads that are lifted and or pushed by split forking or bulldozing can cause hazards in several ways. Here's a few. It can compromise the forklift's capacity. It can damage the forks, could damage the floor. And this could also lead to the load or part of the load to tip over, which would cause product damage. Interfering with the maneuverability of the forklift and the driver has less control of the loads during turns and stopping. There may be additional hazards depending on the specific workplace conditions, such as the weather, the lighting, space restraints, training, supervision, truck maintenance, and the job production schedule. So the question is, does OSHA consider these practices to violate OSHA code 1910.17801, which states that stable or safely arranged loads shall be handled? And they certainly do. If the loads that are being split forked or bulldozed result in hazardous conditions because they are not stable or safely arranged, they would be a violation of that code. Conversely, if these work practices are done safely, there would be no violation. However, these two work practices are potentially hazardous for the forklift drivers and for any pedestrians who may be in the area. The forklifts are not designed to be used to lift and move loads in the split forking or bulldozing manner observed. In addition, OSHA code 19101783IM requires that employees receive training on any operating instructions, warnings, or precautions listed in the operator's manual. If the truck's manual has warnings against these types of practices, then they must be included in the training program content. The amount of money being spent on wheels and tires is a big concern, and lowering these costs for repair and replacement should be a top priority. The damage to this wheel is from the operator resting the pallet on the base leg during travel. This allowed a nail or a piece of broken pallet to come in contact with the wheel, causing the groove. 
Teaching proper load handling procedures during training or refresher training will control many of the items noted in these photos and most can be avoided. There are many areas in the warehouse with damaged rack, mostly uprights, all caused by operators not following the correct load handling procedure for narrow aisle machines. These damages can be avoided with the proper pallet removal and placement techniques for their equipment. Operators should be made aware of the proper pallet configuration in order to take advantage of every pallet position in the warehouse. There were dead sections due to improper put away of pallets. There were also many pallets extending past the rack. This can cause an accident to occur with serious injuries, product damage, or truck damage, and most likely all three. Raymond of New Jersey is here to help you make an ongoing commitment to workplace safety which meets or exceeds OSHA requirements, not only reducing accidents and maintenance costs, but it may also help to lower insurance rates. Let's take a few minutes now to answer any questions you may have.